All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back. I don't know which series this is going to be under, but uh, this is Mixum CZ's April Patreon deck request, and I bet you're wondering, but Kano, it's September. Yes, this was, I have several deck requests from Mixum, and um, they were very, very accommodating because uh, I, I, like, I had my birthday, then I moved, then I was super stressed about finding a house for a couple months, then I moved again. So, like, uh, this is coming out super late. I have a couple more in the pipeline after this, but I am now to a point where I can start recording, so I'm going to do that. And I was requested to play a version of Blue White Miracle Control that Mixum plays um, at their local LGS. So I was like, okay, I will play that exact list as described, and uh, we might do an updated version of this list, but for um, card choice, I don't like. I don't know what the best card choice for a blue-white control deck is right now. I've kind of been out of that archetype for a while. I have no idea what the best setup for miracles are or any of that stuff. So I'm not going to critique any deck choice, especially if this is like a local metagame list, especially because card availability is definitely going to be a factor in that sort of circumstance. So I'm not going to critique uh, card choices or anything like that. Um, I am actually interested to see because this list plays both March of Otherworldly Light and Prismatic Ending, which one is more useful on average in a deck like this. That interests me, and um, I love Miracles. Miracle is one of my uh, favorite... Uh, mechanics in the game so uh we're just gonna run this through a competitive league as is and then maybe we'll do an updated version later but for now and with all of those considerations in mind we are playing a control deck and our win conditions in this deck are hull of the storm giants and like celestial colonnade we could be alting uh five mana to fairy or alting jace the mind sculptor uh we other than that, it's like Snapcaster Beatdown. <laughs> and that's that's how we intend to win. And we just play a billion counter spells, some cantrips, uh, Fire and Ice, Memory Deluge is like our card advantage spell of choice. I think this card is actually incredibly powerful, um, as has been proven repeatedly in, I guess, the modern format. It also has some really awesome art. And out of the sideboard, we have Celestial Purge. Um, I'm kind of interested to see how this does in the current metagame as well. Because I think there are some black or red permanents that it is nice to just be able to exile uh, at instant speed. We also have uh, Rest in Peace as our Grave Hate of Choice. We have Dress Down, which matters a lot for um, the Saga matchup. It takes care of the tokens, as well as a few other cards. It has some utility. Uh, we've got Spreading Seas as our Land Hate of Choice. Also good against Saga, and uh, also good against decks like Tron. We have Mystical Dispute for the counter matchup. We have Shark Typhoon as an additional win condition. We've got Dovin's Vetoes and Ashiok Dream Renders. Now, I will say I am not a control expert. I've played a lot of like blue-white Battle of Wits control and things like that. So a lot of the like weirder control lines I'm aware of, but uh, I am by no means the best control player. And I'm likely to make mistakes, especially when it comes to sideboarding, but I will do my best. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into a competitive league, and I will see you guys in round one. Alrighty, we are on the play, and uh, I guess, yeah, this is keepable. Uh, let me actually check the deck list really quick. Okay, alright. Yeah, I think this is keepable. Uh, the opt makes it a lot nicer. I, one thing that uh, I think is a legitimate criticism of me as a player is because I primarily play Tron competitively, I actually tend to over-mulligan with other decks, looking for um, specific tools. And while Tron can do that, most other decks can't, especially not Control. Like, Control, you should really only mulligan hands that are truly unplayable, in my opinion. Um... It looks like we have the hammer matchup, so let's uh, fetch. We're going to get a hollowed fountain, because we don't have any other white source, and we are going to opt. Uh, yeah, I do want a third land, so I'm actually going to put that on top. We untap. We draw a force of negation. That is good. So we play an island, pass the turn. 
So, uh, there are some fun things you can do against Hammer if you're playing Archmage's Charm. Specifically, if they equip the Hammer to a 1-drop, you can gain control of the 1-drop and the Hammer stays attached. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's some interesting circumstances you can get yourself into there. Opponent goes to combat, attacks us for 1, that's fine. We take 1, go to 16. Uh, opponent fetches Arid Mesa to get a snow covered plains, and they play Shadow Spear. Alright, we untap. We draw another Force of Negation, play an island, pass the turn. So, normally in this circumstance, you'll be looking to Archmage's Charm to draw some extra cards to make your land drops. Uh, okay, I thought that might have been a Pure Steel Paladin initially, so I was considering. Um, Looking for, looking for the Archmage's Charm Steel line here, um, but considering that that wasn't a pure Steel Paladin, that was in fact a Stoneforge Mystic. Now either this version of the list does not have Cauldre, but more likely than not, if they fetched Colossus Hammer, they either have uh, pure Steel and they want to go for the Insta Kill, or they've got a Cauldre in their hand already. Um, I am going to Archmage's Charm to draw cards here. Okay. Uh, Fire and Ice is potentially useful. Uh, I'm going to play a Plains. I did not select my basic lands um, with any real intent here. I just auto-filled auto with whatever Moto wanted to pick. Um, if my opponent goes for a play where they suit up the Ginger Brutes with Pure Steel Paladin, I can actually just tap it with Fire and Ice. Okay, opponent is going to put an additional equipment onto the battlefield. It is Cauldra, so they were holding on to Cauldra. Um, by the same token, I can gain control of the germ token. And I actually think I'm going to do that. So gain control of the germ token. Cauldra will stay attached to the germ token. So until my opponent gets a pure steel paladin on board... Um, we should be able to handle basically anything they want to do. Um, I think with as much, like, backup and protection as we've got going on here, I'm fine just, uh, Prismatic Ending to kill, um, uh, Stoneforge Mystic here. I could actually Snapcaster Prismatic Ending to deal with something else, but because I'm holding on to Double Force and Fire and Ice, I'm just going to start attacking with their Cauldra. Um, the biggest problem, of course, is the pure steel, because then they could suit up everything onto something else. Uh, likely what would happen in that case is we would fire an ice to tap, um, and then try to, like, opt into terminus. So I cannot disrupt pure steel here. Okay. They can't equip at instant speed. Um, I'm surprised they didn't just try and suit up the hammer as well. But we'll tap the Ginger Brute. I left up white mana because if we do draw Terminus, uh, that's an easy win or an easy out from this situation. Um, I think they were playing around a removal spell because this does grant haste. They could have put that on pure steel, um, but they did not. Okay, still no... Um, uh, still no Terminus. I think I'm going to go for a Prismatic Ending, Snapcaster Prismatic Ending to kill both of their creatures. That only becomes a concern if they have another Pure Steel. Hmm. Maybe I just Prismatic Ending the Pure Steel Paladin. I'm going to try that. Uh, yeah, because if they have another Pure Steel, I need the Counterspell to deal with it. If I Prismatic Ending here, I can't force a Pure Steel Paladin. So we need to be able to counter the Pure Steel. So Guard is Aid. Um, I mean, yeah, that's a problem. Okay, I'm going to force Pitching Force. Opponent goes to combat. They attack for six. Hit us down to 9, and they play an Esper Sentinel. 
So I think I'm going to Snapcast or Opt here rather than counter the Sentinel. We are kind of looking to see if we can't find a Terminus. I, I mean, obviously I can't find it off of Opt because I won't have the mana to cast it. But even if we draw a land and then we just draw a Terminus, I can just cast a six mana Wrath. That's not that big of a problem. Okay, Hall of the Storm Giants is a tap land, which is not really what I want, so we'll put that on the bottom. Okay, March makes me feel better. Uh, that's a pretty good removal in this situation. And they play a Memnite. We untap. Uh, we draw big to fairy. So I think we just pass. And we have counterspell March. If we can top deck a Terminus, um, this board is basically irrelevant. All of the cards my opponent has. So I will probably be casting March to Exile Ginger Brute. Um, I can then pay for Esper Sentinel and have Counterspell for anything that follows up. Or I mean, I, I can March Ginger Brute, pay for Esper Sentinel. Yeah, okay, I said that right. Okay, make sure we tap correctly. Oh, shoot! I did not mean to pay two for X. That's a punt. Uh, in that case, I'm just going to let them have draw a card. That was a mistake. I meant to tap X1 and then have a um, extra mana floating to pay for Esper Sentinel. Uh, Giver of Runes is a little bit of a problem, but I don't think it's counterspell worthy. I'm, I'm basically waiting to see if they play a pure steel. Double blue for the reality chip. Mm, I'm just gonna wait on that. Untap. We draw an opt. So let's memory deluge and see if we can't find some lands. Alternatively, I could play Teferi and uptick. Yeah, we're gonna play Teferi and uptick, actually. Uh, opponent can draw an extra card. I think this is going to be a long league. You have to make a lot of thinking decisions. Okay, we draw a Flooded Strand, which is fine. Um, I'm actually going to uh, fetch right now and get Prairie Stream. Uh, I really love these lands, especially in Control. Um, just being able to like fetch up what is effectively a Tundra because you play enough basics is, is super nice. Okay. So next turn we can opt and hope to hit a Terminus. We're just on a slightly more than a 1 in 10% chance to draw it. And that would just be incredible. Okay, opponent plays a land. They play a pure steel paladin. Well, we do need to counter this. Hopefully they don't have a spell pierce. Otherwise we are just dead. And um, I would have had to have let that resolve to try to opt for Terminus, at which point if we didn't hit it, we would definitely die. Is this a second pure steal? Oh, okay. All right. Okay, opponent goes to combat. They're deciding whether to attack us or attack Teferi. Uh, they attack us for three. I am just gonna go ahead and block. Opponent is gonna give pro blue here because they shouldn't be trying to protect from an individual removal spell at this point. Uh, they should be much more worried about a Wrath, and indeed opponent is. Okay, we take one. They play an Ornithopter. We untap. We draw an Island. Uptick to Fairy, go to six. On to Fairy. We draw Jace. Alright, um, play an Island. Play Jace. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let them draw a card. We kind of are in Terminus or Bust situation right now. So let's Brainstorm. There's the Terminus. So we're going to put back Flooded Strand and put Terminus on top of Flooded Strand. Um, and we did uptick to Fairy. So we are going to play Little to Fairy. Because if our opponent is playing counter spells or protective magic, we basically want to um, not allow them to cast spells at instant speed. So we're going to pass. We untap Prairie Stream Hollowed Fountain. They untap. I think they're still holding this Colossus Hammer as well. So they're going to reconfigure 
And at this point, we are going to opt for the Terminus. Uh, we will not pay two. They can draw an extra card. That's fine. They just tapped out. So we scry the Terminus on top of our deck, then draw and reveal mm -hmm. Terminus, and then we cast Terminus. We put all of our opponent's creatures on the bottom of their deck, and now we have three active Planeswalkers, and it is highly improbable that our opponent will be able to do anything. So our game plan from this position is to ultimate Big Teferi and repeatedly brainstorm with Jace to exile all of their permanents. Oh my gosh, really? We're dead. We're dead because Caldra grants haste. So what I should have done there, I don't know that this would be considered a punt, but what I should have done is stacked the land on top of the Terminus and down-ticked Little Teferi to bounce Cauldra. It was something I was thinking about doing, but I was like, it's probably not going to matter, right? And, uh... But they had to have land pure steel for that to work. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, all right. Note to self. Okay, so for... Um... I think we want Dress Down. Uh, let's bring in Dress Down, Spreading Seas, and uh, I don't know that we need, sh do we need Shark Typhoon to make Chump Blockers? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think Timely is gonna matter here. Um, oh, let me think about this. If I want Spreading Seas and Dress Down, what do I replace? Dress Down sort of does what Opt does, but not really. Force Negation is so good versus an early Sigarda's aid hand. In fact, that's actually kind of critical. Um, oh, goodness. I mean, Counterspell is weaker here. It's still useful, but it's weak because we actually have to spend mana, whereas our opponent just, like, casts three one-drops and we die. I'm going to shave one Counterspell off. Spreading Seas I want for Saga reasons. And, and I guess it does shut off Ink Moth, so it's it's somewhat useful here. Um, March is good against Ink Moth, but is effectively the same as Prismatic Ending in all other circumstances, and it's really good removal. Uh, I think I'm going to cut one Force and maybe a Snapcaster here. I have no idea how to sideboard with this particular list, so I'm just kind of working off... I'm, I'm trying to work off of what I know, and I'm kind of guessing, so... All right, this hand seems okay. Like, it's not incredible, but we do have Prismatic Ending for Interaction. We have lands, we have a Force in case of emergency. I think if my opponent goes turn one Sigarda's Aid, I would Force Pitching Archmage's Charm, but that's such a massive waste of resources to be able to do that. I guess if it's only Sigarda's Aid, I would Prismatic Ending, actually. Okay, opponent fetches with Arid Mesa. There's Sigarda's Aid. Okay, so we will be using Prismatic Ending. To deal with that. We draw another Force Negation, which does make me feel a little better. Um, I'm going to play Hollowed Fountain Tapped and Prismatic Ending Sigarda's Aid. Okay, pass the turn. So Stoneforge Mystic is like the thing I would not be able to deal with. Okay. Opponent plays an Urza's Saga into a Giver of Runes. We untap. We draw an Opt. Um, let's Opt and see... Actually, there's no reason to rush. We can pass. I was going to say we could opt and try and hit Spreading Seas to actually just kill Saga, but I might need to counterspell a creature this turn if they're not just intent on making a token. If my opponent does nothing on their turn at all, um, I'm going to be casting Archmage's Charm to draw cards here. Uh, no, I will not reveal Terminus. Kind of sucks that we drew it then. We draw another Opt. So play an Island. Let's go ahead and Opt. Another Terminus. We'll put to the bottom. And another Terminus. It is Raining Termini, which is the uh, name of this deck. Okay, put a Cracks Arid Mesa. Gets a Snow Covered Plains. But that's three of four Terminus we just saw. Uh, we are at four lands, so we're only one land away from just hard casting these Wraths, which would be great. So, opponent's main phase, Saga ticks up to three. Okay, they float mana off of it. They can probably just fetch a Pithing Needle here if they're not going to get a hammer. They got a hammer. 
They got an Ink Moth. They've got a Pure Steel. They can animate Ink Moth, but it has Summoning Sickness. Okay, well now we're going to try and find... Uh, I am going to keep this, but um, this is unfortunate because we were taking so much damage this turn. Okay, we take 13. I actually think I'm dead because I opted over two Terminus. Uh, so unless the fourth Terminus is like my next draw... Okay, Ice, Ice actually keeps me alive, briefly. Um, so Prismatic Ending can only kill Giver. So what we do is fetch with Polluted Delta. Shock Steam Vents. Prismatic Ending... Oh, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Uh, we do need to Prismatic Ending Giver Rooms, otherwise we will die. Uh, I was wanting to fire here to kill Pure Steel, but then I just I just die to the construct. So what we have to do is we have to ice whichever creature is going to attack. Then we have to draw an untapped land that doesn't require us to spend the rest of our life total and cast Terminus. Okay, so beginning of combat, ice the construct. Opponent has a blacksmith skill. So we force, pitch, and force. We draw a counterspell. That's a nice top deck. But we're going to need to be able to cast this Terminus. Uh, we go to two. And opponent plays Sigarda's Aid, so we could actually die at any time. We draw planes. We must cast a Terminus to survive. Um, but if my opponent is holding a second Pure Steel, a Core Outfitter... Uh, magnetic Theft, or um, another Hammer, we're dead. Opponent animates Nexus, swings, does not have another Hammer. Okay, so we're still in this game. Another counter spell is nice. Uh, also, this being Ink Moth and not Blink Moth is actually beneficial here, because we have no way to answer it other than blocking with Celestial Colonnade. And uh, it's dealing Infect rather than regular damage. We would be dead this turn if it didn't have Infect. Three mana. Uh, counterspell. Counterspell. Okay, opponent not going for the Animate because we have untapped mana. They are afraid of the control player. Pass the turn. But a Crax Arid Mesa. They do only have one card in hand now, which is nice. Also, I'm pretty sure I threw the first game officially because I let them draw, like, three extra cards I didn't want them to. Counterspiel. No! You can't just have nine pure steals! That's illegal! Opt for spreading seas on the bottom. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I am going to mark that as a punt. Technically, um, I should not have cast Opt until they were in this position because I could have hit the fourth Terminus, or actually I did shuffle my deck. Um, they did not go for the equip. Oh, they didn't have Metalcraft! Excellent. We naturally draw Terminus. Lovely. I should have kept the Spreading Seas. Well, I'm gonna mark that as another punt. Mix them, I hope I'm doing you proud. <laughs> oh, this is awful! Kano's like literally actively trying to throw the game and somehow is still in it. Okay, opponent activates Ink Moth. They go to combat. I expect my opponent just drew a Blacksmith skill. Um, I will be animating Colonnade to block, however. Oh no. Well, I have Colonnade to block. It doesn't have Trample, and I'm going to 1. Let's get Prairie Stream. Uh, white, blue, whatever, whatever, whatever. Colonnade takes the hit for me. Hammer falls off because it stops being a creature. We draw Teferi. Play Teferi. Um, I'm going to bounce Sigarda's aid. We draw land. Uh, that is not good. Pass the turn. Opponent plays pure steel, and we're dead. Because they now have Metalcraft. Oh my goodness. Uh-huh. Well then. Unfortunately, that is a loss. Uh, one that I think I could have prevented. I, I really played that terribly, so I will see you guys in round two. Alright, I would like to play first, and I think this hand's okay. 
<laughs> I'm not a control player. Uh, hashtag not a control player. So hopefully this hand is good enough. Uh, we are against an unknown opponent. So we're going to play an island and pass the turn. We are looking for lands. We got Counterspell Tron. Opponent plays a Spire Bluff Canal into a Ragavan. We just can't beat that. Let's go ahead and opt. Uh, Hollowed Fountain, we do want. Untap. I revealed Terminus. Oh, Moto Interface, why? Now they know what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, play another island, pass the turn. Actually, that is another pun. I should have played the Hollowed Fountain because I might need white for a possible top deck Terminus. All right, we're in game one of round two and we're up to a punt counter five. Mix him, I'm trying my best. Uh, punt plays a Flooded Strand. Goes to combat. Attacks for two. Uh, they hit us down to 18 and get a treasure revealing an island. Okay. They crack Flooded Strand. They get an island. And we will counterspell a Ledger Shredder. So theoretically, when you're playing, like, Terminus Control against a creature deck, you actually want your opponent playing out creatures. Um, because the intent is to wipe them all off the board for one mana to, like, really accrue your advantage. The problem with that uh, is when you're Kano you tend to play the wrong lands, miracle the wrong cards, etc. You know, reveal miracle cards when you can't cast them, etc, etc. Okay, so uh, we're going to play planes. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play a land. They go to combat, they attack us for two. We get hit to 16, they exile a March of Otherworldly Light, they consider, they leave whatever they saw on top, they cast Expressive Iteration, uh, I think I will attempt to counter that, that's their card advantage spell. Now opponent could have a spell pierce here, they don't. They could have also had a counter spell. Uh, I will miracle this Terminus. To deal with Raghavan. Okay, they save a Counterspell for our Terminus, so we Counterspell their Counterspell, because we really want Ragavan off the board, and now we are out of Counterspells. <laughs> Finally, we make it to our main phase and play a Hollow Pound Tap to pass the turn. So, it's probably a Murktide, I am imagining. Okay, opponent does nothing. We draw Polluted Delta. Polluted Delta is nice. Play Polluted Delta, pass the turn. Opponent Archmage's Charms to draw cards, sure. They play their fourth land, play a Dragon's Rage Channeler. They do have Delirium. So let's cast a Memory Deluge. We'll pick up Prismatic Ending and uh, Counterspell. Untap. I maybe should have grabbed a land there, because we are only playing 23 land. Okay, top deck the land. Nothing to it. Prismatic ending. Okay, play an island. Pass the turn. We are one land off of flashbacking memory deluge. Put a cracks a scalding tarn, gets a steam vents tapped, then we pass. Opponent plays Odawara. They pass on their end step. Um, I will be fetching up a Steam Vents here. I have double white. I kind of want access to my red mana if I happen to draw Fire Ice, because Fire Ice can kill Ragavan. Okay, we draw to Fairy. Uh, no sense playing him out right now, though. Opponent's got four cards in hand and they're passing with, you know, no action. So they're probably just holding up Archmage's Charm to draw more cards. Or they're just holding up interaction. Opponent is going to dash Ragavan. Um, I'd actually prefer that not resolve. Um, if they do have like another counter spell, okay, they can prevent this from occurring. 
So what we'd really like to avoid is our opponent having an unholy heat or um, their third counterspell. They hit a Snapcaster Mage off the top of my deck. They can just run that out as like an aggro threat. And they do. Okay. So they're tapped out. We untap. We draw a little Teferi. All right. So while they're tapped out, play a little Teferi. Bounce our Snapcaster Mage. Draw a card. Shock Hollowed Fountain. And pass the turn. Okay, opponent considers. They can only play spells at sorcery speed. I expect they have at least two burn spells in their hand. Um, do I want to counter this? I think making them use another counter spell or, or they won't have a counter spell, but forcing them to use another burn spell to take care of Teferi is worth it here because I'm holding five mana Teferi. If I was not holding this, I would probably let this go through and look to counter something else. But as long as this Teferi's on board, they can't counterspell anything. They have to burn him to kill him. They can't dash Ragavan because we can just block Ragavan. Okay, there's the second burn spell. All right, we untap. We draw Flooded Strand. Play Teferi. Okay, up tick. Draw Fire Ice, only Flooded Strand, and pass the turn. No attacks with Snapcaster. Untap Hollowed Fountain and Island. Okay. Opponent draws. Opponent bolts Snapcaster Mage. Dashes Ragavan. Goes to combat and attacks us. So I could have iced it to draw a card. Maybe I should have, but this just deals with it. So cast fire. Okay, problem solved and game over. All right, we out controlled Merktide. Fantastic. So versus Merktide, we definitely want the rest in pieces. I'm gonna drop two Snapcasters for them. Uh, we definitely want Ashiok. Purge is something to consider. Ending is actually pretty bad, because it will never kill Merktide. It can kill Dragon's Rage Channeler. Um, okay, Purge doesn't kill Merktide either, to be fair, but Purge also can kill like Blood Moons. I guess Prismatic Ending can, but it'll be much harder in our deck. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to go one Purge and keep two Ending in the deck. I don't know which is actually better here. I just want Purge as a potential instant speed thing, whereas Ending is not. Um, Mind Sculptor is really never going to survive in this situation, but because we rely on maybe trying to put Termini back on top of our deck, we keep it in. Uh, I think Force Negation, despite being like bad in a matchup where we're going to be trading this many resources, I think we still need to play it. Timely Reinforcements is good, especially in this matchup, because it gains life as well as like creates blockers. But at the same time, we probably have more impactful stuff happening. I think this is more of a pet card situation, and I love Timely Reinforcements. I think this card is fantastic. I just don't know that I want to be running it here. Um, this also kind of feels like a matchup where I want Shark Typhoon. Uh, I definitely want Dispute. Um... Do I want Shark Typhoon? It is an uncounterable surprise blocker. I'm going to go for the Typhoon. And let's see, we're going to cut a Jace, a Fire and Ice. Um, I'm going to go with No Purge, and I'm going to. I'm going to cut down on one Terminus. I, I cut a lot of removal here, so I hope that that doesn't bite me. I don't know that I'm really actually able to cut any Planeswalkers, but we'll see, I guess. I'm learning this deck as I'm playing it, so... Uh, this is definitely a mulligan. There's no way I can keep this hand. This is way too risky, because if we don't, like, just make running land drops, we are pretty well done. I could keep it maybe because of Opt, but it's I think it's just too risky. 
This is not much better, but we do have Teferi and March and a second cantrip. I can put back big Teferi. Also really risky, but I think I'm going to go for it. Like going to five is just, it's such a crunch on our resources. I'm just, I think I'm going to hope to be a little lucky here. I don't think there's a turn one play I would force. I guess it's technically correct to not F6, just in case. Okay, I'm gonna start Spire Bluff Canal. Passes. We draw Archmage's Charm. Play Flooded Strand, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Scalding Tarn. Hard casts Ragavan. So this is kind of awkward, because um, I can only fetch up white for March or red for fire. I think this is one place where you would want to try them in this deck. Um, but as it stands, I have to fetch and opt here. So we're going to get a Hollowed Fountain, Shock, and then cast Opt. Okay, land, we found it. We untap. Draw another pl or another island, which is great. Play the island. Um, we're going to pass to our opponent's upkeep. Actually, we're going to go to their beginning of combat. And we're going to try and cast March X1. And we'll probably have Force, negation, force of Negation pitching Ice um, as our backup strategy. Okay. If our opponent uses an Archmage's Charm to counter here, that would be incredibly good for us. They have a Spell Pierce. Well, I think we're going to make them have the uh, counter spell to back this up. Okay. I mean, if they do, we're trading three cards for like two and a half. Mystical Dispute back up. Okay. Uh, so now the question is, do we play Teferi and uptick him, or do we just use Archmage's Charm to try and steal a Raghavan? Because <laughs> Raghavan is an incredible card advantage engine. They hit Opt. Let's see if they cast the Opt. They do. I mean, the odds that they have a Burn spell is pretty high. We draw another March. Does that change what we're doing? I don't think so. It's just gain control of Ragavan. They have a burn spell, they have a burn spell, but if they have a burn spell and their only other threat is like a Murktide, we can bounce the Murktide, and that will use up a lot of their resources. Okay. We untap and draw. Opt. Go to combat. Attack them for two. Opponent cracks Polluted Delta. Gets an island. And they cast Subtlety. So let's, oh. I can march to kill Subtlety by pitching to Fairy and paying all of my mana. Um, otherwise the answer was to opt and try and hit uh, Counterspell, which may have been better. But I'm actually gonna go for the march line here because I feel like if my opponent had any more efficient answer, like a burn spell, they would have used that first and kept subtlety for one of our planeswalkers. Giving up on Teferi here feels really bad, but getting... Oh. A new Ragavan? Uh, it is correct to leave this in exile, because if I play this one, it increases their delirium. And having an untapped Ragavan does not matter. It is me. I am the Murktide now. Oh, <laughs> there's the there's the unholy heat we were thinking was going to happen. They just top decked it. They're down to two cards left in hand. Uh, we know those cards, based on how they played, are not spell pierce. Okay, I'm going to opt because I would like to get a interactive spell or like a haymaker. Fire and ice. I think I'm going to dump. I would rather have a counter spell. Memory Deluge is pretty good. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and Memory Deluge right now. 
99% they don't have a spell pierce, but they do have a counter spell. Okay. It's actually fine. They're down to one card in hand. So as long as this isn't like expressive iteration chain into a full hand again, we're fine. There's a Merc Tide. That's a problem. If it's a Merc Tide, we at least... Okay. We have four Termini in the deck. Let's draw one. Alternatively, even like Jace Unsummon Merc Tide is good here. Opponent is stopped on our upkeep. We draw Hollow Fountain which is none of those things I wanted. So play Hollow Fountain tapped. Pass the turn. Now Big Teferi is also an answer. Okay. Opponent untaps. They draw a card. If they draw additional threats from this standpoint, it is correct to keep them in hand. Okay, we draw Jace. Well, we gotta play Jace and see if Jace resolves. He does not. <laughs> Oh, unfortunate. Okay. I drew another spell pierce. Yeah, I've got a feeling I wasn't supposed to pitch the fairy, but rather play the fairy out. So opponent is going to hit us down to one. Okay, we are at one. We untap. And we draw rest in peace. All right. On to game three. Um, we may want Dovin's Veto. I'm going to cut Shark Typhoon to put a Snapcaster Mage back in the deck. I know I have Rest in Peace in the deck, but being able to buy back our other spells actually seems kind of more important if we don't have Rest in Peace online. Do you want to play first? Uh, this hand is pretty good. We will keep. Okay. Play a Colonnade tapped. Pass the turn. Opponent going to play Spire Bluff Canal into a Dragon's Rage Channeler. We draw Big Teferi. Uh, so we can either Prismatic Ending or we can have Counterspell. And I think I'm going to go for the Prismatic Ending here. Uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler is one of those creatures that is dangerous to leave on board, especially versus their deck, because it allows them to consistently manipulate their top deck. Um, as well as build Delirium, which is very dangerous. Okay, opponent does not dash Ragavan. They just cast him. We draw another Prismatic Ending right on time. So, Prismatic Ending again, with Counterspell backup. And so at this rate, we really just need to draw lands. And we can ice a land, too, if we wanted to. So it fetches up a Steam Vents tapped, they untap. They draw. Uh, I am going to counterspell an expressive iteration, because they could be digging for a land, but it is their card advantage spell, and we just don't want that to resolve. Uh, land, please. I mean, it's an opt, so let's opt and try and find a land. Uh, Jace is not a land. Unfortunately, we have to put him to the bottom. Play Hall of Storm Giants, pass the turn. And I think I'm going to ice Steam Vents on their upkeep. Because they missed a land drop specifically. So if they want to counter this, they're out that mana anyway. Um, they spell pierce just to stop us from drawing a card, but other, other than that, the effect is the same. They play a Spire Bluff Canal, so that's what they top deck this turn. We untap. Uh, we draw Terminus, which is not useful. You're really hoping for a land there, but that was why I put Jace to the bottom. Maybe it would have been correct to keep Jace, just so I'd have something to play on four, but the odds are so high right now that my opponent is holding a, an actual counter spell because of how they're playing. Okay, opponent plays Bobble. Cracks Bobble to look at our top deck, and passes. We untap, they draw a card, we draw Hollow Fountain. I can't just run out to Fairy here, right? There's like no way that works. Because if they're not playing Frets, that means they're either holding Murktide and can't cast it right now. Although I believe if my opponent had a Murktide, 
they would have played it using all of their mana and exiling their whole grave. If they had a counter spell, they would they would be able to play a one drop threat. So they're not playing. They don't have a one drop threat in hand. So if they're unwilling to play Murktide, and they don't have a one drop threat in hand, the only other cards that could be in their hand are burn spells and counter spells. And the only counter spell that they would have in hand would be Archmage's Charm. Like one hundred percent, they have Archmage's Charm. So I'm going to play a Hollow Fountain tapped, and I'm going to pass. There's no way I can cast a fairy this turn. Archmage's trying to draw cards. They could also have a whole bunch of cantrips. But I suspect my opponent is going to play conservatively with counter spells. Okay. I suppose they could have had a cantrip and an actual counter spell there as well. Okay. Play Flooded Strand, they crack Flooded Strand for an island. Okay, Murktide with Counterspell backup. That's what we're looking at here. Yep. Okay. So we untap, draw Snapcaster Mage. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just pass and try to Snapcaster Mage Ice on Murktide Regent. Okay, so cast Snapcaster Mage on the beginning of combat. They counterspell Snapcaster Mage. Sure. They hit us for 7. Go to 13. They pass. We untap. Draw Flooded Strand. So we're going to make like we have Mystical Dispute. Actually, I can cast Terminus and force them to counter if they have a counter then follow up with Teferi if it works. Let's do that. The old six mana removal spell. Okay, another counter. Now, if they're holding like a Dragon's Rage Channeler, they may feel safe enough to like run out additional threats so that they can kill us the turn after. We could maybe get some value with our other Terminus that way. If they don't, I think the play is to play Teferi and try and downtick on Murktide. Because we're at the point now where we're behind and we're just going to take the highest upside play based on our opponent's hand and board state. Okay, I'm going to play the land. It is for seven, we go to five. Untap. Draw Mystical Dispute. Now we don't have to pretend. Play Teferi. If this is Archmage's Charm, we can counter it with Dispute. If it's not, we die. Subtlety. We will Dispute the Subtlety. They have another one? Oh! So close. Ah, yep. And we lose. Oh, that was so close. All right, all right, both of those felt winnable. Uh, I think if I had been more experienced with this deck, I could have won either one of those. I'll see you guys in round three. All right, we will be on the draw for round three, and I've got a mulligan. A one lander with no cantrips is just not gonna work. I think on the draw and with an off, I can keep this. I'm gonna put back Counterspell because I'm gonna need some more card advantage um, off of Archmage's Charm, I think, to make it through. Okay, opponent starts Black Cleave Cliffs. Could be Jund, could be Goblins. Play Flooded Strand, pass the turn. Alright. Opponent plays a Verdant Catacombs. They appear to be some sort of Jund deck. So, fetch with Flooded Strand, let's get a Hollowed Fountain. And we will opt. We're looking for a second blue land. Snapcaster to the bottom. Terminus, no. Untap. We draw a Flooded Strand. Play Flooded Strand. Pass the turn. Okay. Opponent plays a Forest. So we are going to fetch... 
and get a hollowed fountain tapped, untap, draw a snapcaster, play blast zone, pass the turn. Uh, I will snapcaster opt to try and find a fourth land, I think. Opponent is going to cast something on my end step. Jund colors. They cycle Zyatora's Proving Ground. Okay. And they pass. So, flash in Snapcaster. Snapcaster opt. Opt. It's Fairy Time Raveler to the bottom. I would not like to miracle this Terminus either. We untap. Draw Steam Vents, Shock Steam Vents, pass the turn. Well, attack for two. Opponent goes to 15. Opponent cracks Bloodstained Mire. It's a Blood Crypt. Tapped. They cast a Riveteer's Charm. Exile the top three cards of your library until your next end step. You may play those cards. Lily and two lands. So it's effectively an instant speed divination for them. They can play like Pete Land and Lily. Uh, if they cast Lily, I will counterspell. <laughs> Kind of expecting them to follow up with a Renin Six. Yep. That is a bit unfortunate. They pick up a land though, they don't kill Snappy. We untap, we draw Flooded Strand. So play Flooded Strand. Go to combat. Attack Renin Six. And I am going to play out Jace. He's probably going to die. But I want to... Actually, do I want to shuffle these Terminus away? I actually don't think I do. I'm going to fetch Flooded Strand. Oh, I don't have any more Hollowed Fountains. Okay. So I need to have a Plains here. Brainstorm. And we'll put back Terminus and Terminus. I guess I should have only put back one, um, so I could still march exiling like a Tarmogoy for something this turn, but... I'm expecting uh, Jace to die to some combination of like a Bolt or K-Command or... okay. Okay, another Lily. I'm gonna make us discard... I'm gonna discard Opt. They're going to pick up Zyatora's Proving Ground and play it. Okay. We untap. We draw Terminus. We don't cast it. Play an island. Go to combat. And I'm going to attack Liliana. And pass the turn. I could tick up Blast Zone to 2 to kill Renin 6. What land did my opponent pick up? Burn Catacombs, okay. I'm going to discard Terminus. Opponent's probably reading Terminus. They are going to dash Raghavan. So let's march away Raghavan. I think I'm going to Snapcaster Opt and skip over this Terminus I put back on top of the deck. almost clicked on Terminus because I said Terminus. Yeah, opponent definitely has removal spells. Terminus to the bottom. We draw Teferi. Untap. We draw Colonnade. So play Colonnade. Play to fairy. I guess I should have attacked first, but um, we'll go to combat. Attack Liliana. 
And I'm going to unsummon my own Snapcaster and draw a card. And draw an island. So that gives me something to discard to Liliana safely. Put it Sacks Nurturing Peatland to draw a card. Okay, they down take Ren and Six to kill Teferi, that's fine. They make each player discard, so we're going to discard this island we don't need. Opponent discards a Verdant Catacombs. They play a Tarmogoyf. And they pass. Okay, we untap, draw an island, play an island. Um, I guess we're going to animate Colonnade. And go to combat, kill Renan 6. One of this Fatal Push. They should have done that immediately after animating, but we'll try countering here. The, I think the correct play was actually using Archmage's Charm to draw cards at some point and not what I just did. I think, I think the correct play was probably just ticking Blast Zone up to two and drawing cards with Archmage's Charm. Uh, this is the problem with control being incredibly non-linear gameplay. Uh, I really struggle with identifying what is going to be the most optimal line. Um, I'm much better at playing combo decks that are trying to do one thing, or um, decks where I really don't have any control of the situation. Like Battle of Wits, for example. Okay, my opponent just got a, like a plus two card advantage, and I am now Hellbent. Alright, we untap. Terminus, please. Oh, that would have been great. Um, pass the turn. Actually, can I kill Lily? I can kill Lily and ping Voidwalker down, and then they can attack and I'd go to one. Maybe I was just supposed to attack face. Kill Lily. I can Ice Goif or kill Voidwalker to stay alive. Neither of those saves me from a burn spell. If I top deck Terminus, it'd be incredible. Uh, there's Jace. Jace is gone, though. My opponent can now cast Jace, the Mind Sculptor, off of Doughty Voidwalker if they want. I dash Ragavan, and I'm glad I didn't go for the burn because it would have died. Um, but even if I top deck... Well, if I top deck Terminus, I can actually then sack Blast Zone to kill Ragavan. Nope, dead to... <laughs> dead to Renin 6, okay. Alright, so I want Ashiok versus Jund. I want Celestial Purge versus Jund. And I think that's it. Timely might actually be beneficial against them, because it's like a good resource trading card. I think Force is actually kind of bad. I'm going to leave one in the deck, but I'm going to take two out. And Prismatic Ending can hit Planeswalkers. March cannot. I think I'm going to cut one Terminus and... Maybe a Fire Ice, and we'll try it like this. Alright, I would like to play first. Uh, this hand seems pretty good, so we're going to keep. Start with our tap land, pass the turn. Pump Shocks a Blood Crypt into an Inquisition. So I can take Ending, Opt, or Timely. They take Ending. We draw Jace. Play an island, pass the turn. I suspect they have a Renin 6 here, which is why they took Ending. I mean, Ending, I think, is still one of our better cards against Jund, but go ahead and opt in response. Uh, I, will I will take another Ending, actually, believe it or not. But it lands Renin 6, picks up Bloodstained Mire. Draw a Snapcaster, play a Plains. Ending Renin 6. Thoughtseize Bug, pass the turn. For people who don't know what I'm talking about, there's a joke for a long period of time on uh, Magic Online that if you Thoughtseize a card out of your opponent's hand, it Vampiric tutors a copy of that card to the top of your opponent's deck. <laughs> so, um, I know that that happens to me quite frequently. Like, I'll Thoughtseize a card, like the last card out of my opponent's hand, and they'll be completely hellbent, and then just like, <laughs> what are we going to do? So Timely seems really bad here. Um, I am going to probably ditch Timely Reinforcements. We need lands, though, pretty bad. 
Now we're going to Sorcery Speed, Snapcaster Opt to try and hit a land. Uh, I will take Planes, play Planes, pass the turn. If opponent up takes a Lily, we basically have to get rid of the March, because the Planeswalkers are too valuable here. Especially if they play Douthy Voidwalker first. Collective Brutality, they are going to Duress and kill. Okay, well they take March. So now we have a problem. The problem is my opponent is representing a Lightning Bolt and they are forcing me to discard. If I keep Jace, Jace certainly dies to a Lightning. I could discard Jace here, but if I don't draw a land, Teferi is just dead. Like, Teferi doesn't do anything. Um, if I have the Teferi down tick, Teferi is likely going to die. And I can keep Jace and Fate Seal myself so he survives a bolt. Teferi is so much stronger, but I think I have to keep the Jace here. I'll just pray like my opponent's last card is Nathotsis. Okay, little Teferi. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hope they don't have Lightning Bolt and Brainstorm. Because I, I need to get multiple cards in my hand to survive Liliana. Uh, we're going to put back March and Polluted Delta on top of March. I did not want to keep Polluted Delta in my hand because I would then lose it to Liliana and we do need to make land drops. Okay, opponent upticks Lily. We're going to ditch Force of Negation. Opponent ditches Raghavan. And... Opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker they control with the highest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control. Okay, that is unfortunate. We untap and draw Polluted Delta. Play Teferi Time Raveler. So opponent will be able to ult Liliana of the Veil next turn, and I suspect that will be very tempting for them. Um, I'm going to fetch Polluted Delta, get an island, and actually down tick to Fairy here. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to up tick so Teferi doesn't die to a Lightning Bolt. If I down tick and my opponent draws a Lightning Bolt, they can ult Liliana and put me in a position where there's a pile I want to keep that has three mana to Fairy in it. And if that's the case, and they have Lightning Bolt, it's basically lights out because they'll kill Teferi after dividing my permanence. Now, if they go lands to fairy here, um, okay, we're gonna sack the pile of three lands and keep the pile with the fairy. Like losing white mana is highly unfortunate, but at the same time, we need some sort of advantage engine, and our opponent is down to one card in hand. So, if they followed this up with red and six, that'll be incredible. They Coligon's command. What did they pick up? They picked Ragavan back up and deal. Two damage to Teferi. Okay, we draw Colonnade. Play Colonnade. Up to Teferi to four. They draw a card. So they're holding Ragavan, one unknown. They dash Ragavan. Ragavan's gonna hit us. They exile Polluted Delta and get a treasure. And <laughs> they play Liliana. Oh boy! Alright, um... We untap. We draw Celestial Purge. So, uptick to Fairy to 5. Pass the turn. I'm gonna wait for my opponent to uptick Liliana and then probably purge Liliana. Okay. Purge is really good against your stereotypical Jund list. Now my opponent has to ditch a card out of their hand and we don't have to ditch anything. They lose Lightning Bolt. Uh, they could have killed Teferi this turn had they not done that. They're probably still attacking us, hoping to hit, like, a, a draw spell or something. Exile a counter spell. It doesn't do a lot for them. Okay. Ragavan goes back to their hand, and we untap. We draw Archmage's Charm. That's pretty good. Uptick Teferi to six. Pass the turn. Opponent sacks Nurturing Peatland to draw a card. Opponent draws for turn. If we can get away with not countering a spell this turn and drawing cards instead, we are in an incredible position. 
Um, I will counter on Holy Heat, though, because I need Teferi to stay alive. Porter is apparently having a bad dream. It's okay, buddy. Uh, they play Raghavan again. And they hit us. They exile Hollowed Fountain. They pick Raghavan back up. We untap. We draw an opt. Let's go ahead and opt. Um, I will keep a Memory Deluge. At this point, I'm actually going to down tick to Fairy to draw a card, play a Steam Vents tapped, and pass the turn. And we just need to resolve a card advantage spell here. Okay, here comes Raghavan. Raghavan attacks to Fairy. To Fairy goes to one. So if this is K Command killing Teferi and making me discard Deluge, that would be incredible. It's a Goyf. Okay. And they play a land. They pick Raghavan back up. We untap Terminus. Counterspell. Okay. Uh, uptick Teferi. Deluge. Let's keep Jace and... To fairy, unfortunately, terminus terminus to the bottom. Pass the turn. Opponent bolts to fairy. They don't even want to mess around with attacking him. They dash Ragavan. They're gonna hit us for seven. We're gonna go to six. Okay. They exile March of Otherworldly Light off the top of our deck. Okay. They pick Ragavan back up. We untap. We draw Flooded Strand. So play Flooded Strand. Play to Fairy, bounce the Goyf, draw Prismatic Ending. Okay, pass the turn. I will counterspell Raghavan if that's what they lead on, or if they play a land. How? How do they do this? It's incredible. Actually incredible. So we are going to counterspell Thoughtseize, fetch with Flooded Strand, get a Prairie Stream. Uh, we will counterspell Thoughtseize, because I don't want them taking Jace. Opponent dashes Raghavan, goes to combat, attacks us. They might have a lightning bolt to kill us. They exile Memory Deluge, which they can actually cast, and that would be kind of bad for us. And they play Goyf. Pick up Raghavan, okay. We untap, we draw Flooded Strand, which does not do much for us, because we'll just die to Raghavan, probably. Uptick to Fairy, play Flooded Strand, play Jace the Mind Sculptor. I was going to Prismatic Ending Goyf, but I can unsummon Goyf now. And that lets me cast Prismatic Ending at instant speed to kill Raghavan. <laughs> And then not die to Raghavan? Raging Ravine is kind of a problem. Okay, opponent dashes Raghavan. Goes to combat. They attack Jace. Prismatic ending to kill Raghavan. God, two and three are not the same life total right now. But we are going to have to go to two. Opponent replays Goyf. Okay. We need to load a... Uh, Terminus on top of the deck. And then draw it at instant speed, I think. I don't know how we do that, but we need to do that. Um, I'm going to cast Terminus to just deal with Goyf. That might be a mistake. Brainstorm with G. I think I wasn't supposed to not cast that. This is red, right? Yep, okay. So we put back Island, Archmage's Charm, Uptick to Fairy. So it's fine. We found a way to deal with the Raging Ravine now. Please, opponent, start top-decking lands. Lands that are not... No. Don't you... No! <laughs> how, does it... how does he do it? <laughs> how does he draw the perfect answer? Oh. There goes my very sad answer to Raging Rafi. <laughs> and now we die to an angry canyon. Uh... Yep. Incredible. <laughs> so close. And the thing that I think is interesting, um, I, I want to say this about this deck, right? 
So Terminus is a really strong card, and a lot of the cards that we're playing are really strong cards. But almost all of these matches have been like, we almost win, and then our opponent has like one more card. So I think you can almost build a budget control deck now because of how many tools are available in Modern. And I think that's interesting. Probably something I'll go over more when I get to the recap. But I have been recording for nearly two hours. I have no idea how long this is going to take in the actual video itself. But I am getting tired. I need to take a break. And I will come back and play at least one more match. Um, and if we win, I will play two more matches. So uh, I'll see you in uh, an arbitrary amount of time for me. But it'll be like the blink of an eye for you. Alrighty, welcome back to round four. Uh, I would like to play first. And sure, we can keep this. I'd like to have a cantrip in this hand, but um, I do like having force and uh, memory deluge at the top end. Uh, we'll lead on colonnade tapped. That'll pretty much indicate to our opponent what it is we're playing, some variant of control. Um, opponent, I mean, they're playing a Yorian deck, so they're going to be like four color probably. We will not reveal terminus. Um, play Flooded Strand, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Misty and passes. So we're going to crack Flooded Strand, get a Hollowed Fountain, tapped, untap, we draw Steam Vents, okay, play Polluted Delta, pass the turn. Opponent may flash in a um, Ice Fang Quaddle. But they're just going for the rest of domain colors here. I think one thing that we need to be aware of that they're probably playing is that flash um, oblivion ring that counts domain. Okay, opponent goes for Teferi. Apologize if you can hear Porter panting. We just took a very long walk and it was kind of warm out. Um, so we're just going to hard cast Force of Negation so we don't have to pitch any cards to it. And then we can untap, draw another Flooded Strand, play Flooded Strand, pass the turn. Probably just going to go for an end step Memory Deluge. Deluge, how do you say that word? Okay, opponent plays a Risen Reef, that's fine. So if this is Yorian Elemental specifically, it should not be too much of a problem to uh, just like be able to Terminus stuff away. Crack Flooded Strand, get another island, and let's go ahead and de deluge, deluge, however you say that. Um, let's get a land and another deluge. Untap. Uh, you know what? Sure. I'll Miracle Terminus here. It's effectively like casting a swords. Play Flooded Strand, and pass. Opponent cracks Flooded Strand, gets a... Temple Garden tapped. They untap. They go to their main phase. And they cast Ardent Plea, which cascades into probably Glimpse or Rhinos. Glimpse. Um, they only have four permanents, and I'm holding a Terminus I can hard cast. If they don't just flip lands, we can probably just hard cast Terminus and everything is fine. I'm gonna let this go through. Oh, that's not good. Hitting Teferi is pretty strong. Because <laughs> that just shut off my uh, all of my instant speed interaction. <laughs> so that was possibly worst case scenario. They bounce Leyline Binding. So Flooded Strand, let's get our other Hollow Fountain. We untap, we draw an opt. So shock steam vents, and let's go ahead and animate colonnade and try and kill Teferi. They have solitude. Uh, I can float mana, but that doesn't really matter. So they evoke pitching Omnath. Okay. So yeah, I guess I didn't think about the fact that my opponent could flip into a Teferi and that would pretty much ruin my day. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and count that as a punt, but like, I also don't know that that's particularly likely. It's much more likely they hit anything else. 
They're an 80 card deck. They probably play four to fairy, but they have a lot of other permanents. Um, yeah. And this being a, a traditional control deck is not going to match up well with uh, your opponent being a powerful, or your opponent having like a powerful planeswalker like this. Okay, we do draw Prismatic Ending, and we are going to try and fire it off. Opponent could very well have Remand, but they don't. Okay, so our interaction is now unlocked again. So that's that's another reason that Prismatic Ending is very important to have over March of Otherworldly Light. We'll play our own Teferi. Okay, we'll just uptick him. Pass the turn. I'm not above force pitching Snapcaster either. But as long as we have Teferi on board, our opponent can't Cascade. And opponent scoops. Alright. Well, that worked out well for us. Oh, they scooped the match. Alright. Well, we will be going into uh, into round five then to try and uh, try and win half our entry fee back. We did get a win, Mixum. We did get a win. See you guys in round five. Alrighty, welcome to round five. We'll be on the draw. We do have two forces and a removal spell, so I think I will be keeping this. Opponent has sent me a message. Good luck, have fun. Okay, opponent did mulligan to six. They lead on Scalding Tarn, Crack Scalding Tarn, for a Steam Vents, and a Ragavan. Alright, well we are kind of... No, there's nothing we can do about that, actually. I was going to say, we're kind of hoping for a Prismatic Ending or a... Untapped white source, but we don't have a white card in our hand that we can pitch to kill Ragavan, so we're just gonna play Colonnade and pass. And we can kill Ragavan with March of Otherworldly Light, uh, hard cast for two mana, but that will probably involve doing it on my opponent's upkeep so we can protect it with Force and Negation. So, opponent plays an Odawara and attacks us for two, we go down to 18. Opponent gets a treasure and exiles the top card of our deck. It is a Prismatic Ending, which would have been a great top deck. But unfortunately, we will not have a Prismatic Ending. Okay, we draw Jace. So play an island, pass the turn. Okay, on my opponent's upkeep, let's go ahead and cast March of Otherworldly Light to take out Ragavan. I apologize for Porter's Panting. There's not much I can do about it. Okay, opponent has a Spell Pierce, so let's force Pitching Snapcaster. Okay, they're going to Counterspell, so we are going to force Pitching Counterspell. I need this Opt because I need to make land drops for this Jace, like 100%. The good news is we've basically used up all of our opponent's resources and turn. Uh, we used up all of our own in the process, but, you know... Perspective. Hmm. Opponent says, hmm. Why did that not counter the march? I countered both of your counter spells, opponent. Oh, they said this is my first league. They didn't, I, they must have F6'd or something because they didn't see my, or they probably yielded, they didn't see my second force negation. Okay, opponent plays a Fiery Islet. We untap. We draw another force. Alright, well let's opt. Looking for land. Uh, opt to the bottom. There's a land. Play a land, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play a Steam Vents tapped. And pass. We draw Hollowed Fountain. Um, I could just run out Jace. They did use a lot of interactive spells. Problem is, if it doesn't work, we're in trouble. And I, I can't protect him with Force of Negation regardless, so I guess I'm just going to go for it. Okay, I'm going to uptick him on my opponent. Because I want him out of Bolt range. They're pretty far off Delirium. So Unholy Heat's not going to matter. Oh, they had Bolt Unholy Heat as their last two cards. Uh, okay, I will leave it on top. So opponent is drawing a Spire Bluff Canal. So like, if we draw a Memory Deluge off the top, we are just, like, it's just gas. Opponent has to sack Fiery Islet if they want to draw anything this turn. They're completely hellbent. 
Okay, whatever they drew, they don't want to use it. We draw an island. So we'll play it. We're just going to get up to Colonnade mana now. We do have a counter spell for non-creature spells. I would absolutely counter an expressive iteration. I uh, can't do anything about a Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay, they play a land tapped. We untap. Uh, we draw Archmage's Charm. I could gain control of Dragon's Rage Channeler, but I think I'm just going to wait. I would much rather use Archmage's Charm to draw cards here, but if I have to use it to counter, I will. Okay, opponent attacks us for one. Maybe I was supposed to sorcery speed the Archmage's Charm, um, but I kind of wanted the option of stealing if I needed to for some reason. We draw two lands, which is okay-ish. Okay, we draw fire and ice. So, play flooded strand, pass. Uh, we can fetch and shock steam vents, and then fire and ice to kill stuff. Opponent did not attack. Oh, they don't want to attack into the colonnade. Okay. So let's go get our steam vents. We untap. We draw Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage is pretty good. Play a Flooded Strand. Pass the turn. Okay, put a Cracked Scalding Tarn. Gets an Island. They untap. They cast Expressive Iteration. So let's see how they surveil and then decide what we're going to do. Whatever it is, they probably just bin it, unless it's really good. They leave it on top. Okay, uh, so we fire. If they have a counter spell, this would probably draw it. Okay, and then I'm going to cast Force. All right, so whatever it was, they left it on top of their deck, which indicates to me it is probably another threat. And they were holding another Dragon's Rage Channeler, so let's crack Flooded Strand, get a Hollowed Fountain, untap, we draw Prismatic Ending. So, Snapcaster, actually, it's just Ending. Um, I think I'm going to Snapcaster Archmage's Charm while they're tapped out. Like, theoretically, I think what's on top of their deck is a Murktide. And I would really like to draw some cards. Okay, we get another Prismatic Ending. And a land. Let's pass the turn. They left a Consider on top of their deck. Okay, they mill a bobble. They do have Delirium now. And they pass. We untap. We draw a Counterspell. Okay, well, I mean, that does make life slightly easier. Animate Colonnade. Commence the beatdown. Take him to eight. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play a land. They pass. We draw Jace. Continue the beatdown. Take him to two. Okay, opponent has an unholy heat. Um, unluckily for our opponent, we do have a counter spell. And they did wait till combat, so we can just tap Colonnade and it's still going to get in for damage. This so opponent goes to two. Now we have two lethal attackers. I think if my opponent gets, I was going to say, expressive iteration into a way to answer both, that will probably work. Um, if they just produce blockers, we can Jace, Unsummon, Snapcaster, Snapcaster, Fire with one more land. Actually, no, we can we can do that with the amount of lands we have now. Uh, the Archmage's Charm to draw cards. I didn't see what they exiled. It doesn't say what they exiled either. And they scoop. All right, we just gotta take one more game and we get our entry, or not our entry, we get half our entry back. So we're gonna bring in Ashiok, um, we'll bring in Mystical Dispute, and 
kind of want the Dovin's Veto, actually. I'm going to drop one March. I think March is probably our worst removal spell. Let's go one Force, one Opt, and one Terminus. Hang on, that leaves me at 61. I think I'm going to cut another Force. There's very few things we actually want to Force. Because uh, we want to maintain card advantage. Like, just casting it as a 3 mana negate, or a dissipate, is um, good. But I think leaving it in the deck, I'm going to be too tempted to use it incorrectly. <laughs> so. Um, I could also bring in Shark Typhoon, but I don't know that that's necessary. I think Shark Typhoon being like another... I guess it's a threat that they can't necessarily just unholy heat away. I just don't know what I would cut for it at the moment, but it, it probably is a pretty reasonable include. So one land makes this hand good. We're on the draw. I'm going to keep. We have Counterspell on turn two. Any white land gets us to Prismatic Ending, especially when we draw on turn one. Uh, we can answer like a Ragavan, which would be really good. Opponent it shocks a Steam Vents and plays Ragavan. Okay, white land, please. That is not a white land. Play Hall of Storm Giants, pass the turn. Okay, opponent untaps. So they hit us for two with Ragavan, we go to 18, they make a treasure, and they exile Flooded Strand, which is kind of unfortunate for us. That would have been a great top deck. They play an island. They play Dragon's Rage Channeler, and we untap. We draw another Prismatic Ending. So let's play an island, pass the turn. Uh, this might be the Ambush Viper Snapcaster to take out Ragavan. <laughs> uh, not that I really want to do that, but I will. Okay, opponent casts Expressive Iteration, main phase. That's fine. Uh, I really would like to counter that, but I'm not going to. Opponent plays a Spire Bluff Canal off of Expressive Iteration. They go to combat, they attack for three, flash in Snapcaster. Um, if they have a bolt or an Unholy Heat, they're just going to let this resolve and then bolt it immediately. Uh, okay, they do pass the blockers, so we block Ragavan. And it, ex it succeeds, we take one off of the Dragon's Rage Channeler, then untap. We draw a third island. Okay, play the island, pass the turn. Archmage's Charm is now accessible. Uh, we do have a counter spell as well, so. We are going to prioritize using counter spell, I think, um, if necessary. Otherwise, I'll probably Archmage's Charm on my opponent's end step. Um, even though, like, next turn, if I draw a white source, I could counter spell plus Dovin's Veto. I think it's more important to have access to this Archmage's Charm. Okay, opponent counterspells or counterspell. They get to surveil. They put a land in the grave. They dash Ragavan, Delirium enabled. So they attack us for five. We go down to 12. Ragavan exiles a Terminus, which is great because that would not be a good top deck for us right now without white mana. They do make a second treasure. They are down to three cards in hand, and Ragavan will be going back to their hand, but. Three cards plus Ragavan, I mean. Okay, we draw Prairie Stream, which will be untapped here. It's quite nice. Play Prairie Stream, and let's go ahead and Prismatic Ending um, Dragon's Rage Channeler immediately. If they... Hmm. I think if they... Whether they counter this or not, I'm going to Sorcery Speed and Archmage's Charm to draw cards. They tapped for blue-white. Hmm. Okay, they're going to let it happen. I'm going to go ahead and draw cards now, then. Okay, we get more lands, which is really what we need. I wish this was an untapped white source, though, so I could back up Prisma or March of Otherworldly Light with Dovin's Veto. So 100% they're going to dash Ragavan here, unless they have, like, Jace. Okay, so they play Bauble, then dash Ragavan. Ragavan gonna hit us for two. We go to ten, they make another treasure. 
exile a planes off the top of our deck, which would have been fine if we had gotten a planes. I wouldn't have minded that. Opponent is now casting something that involves sacrificing treasure tokens. So it's probably not a Merc Tide, is what I'm getting at. It is a Merc Tide, okay. They leave the bauble in the grave. They pick Ragavan back up, we untap, they draw, and we draw Prismatic Ending. So this is the problem with Prismatic Ending. Now I can march pitching all of my Prismatic Endings to deal with this Merc Tide. Um, problem is I can't back it up with Dovin's Veto, and they almost certainly have a counter spell. So I think what I do instead is play Colonnade, pass. We'll attempt to march X1 to deal with the Ragavan. And then basically I think we got to hope for a top deck Terminus. Okay, they dash Ragavan. They go to combat. March Ragavan. Okay, opponent considers in response. They draw whatever was on top of their deck. They did find a counterspell. They're leaving open red, so we're probably dead to Lightning Bolt. We take seven, go to three. Ragavan exiles the top card of our deck. It was a flooded strand, which would not have helped us here. We pick Ragavan back up. We untap, draw Polluted Delta. Go ahead and scoop and go to game three. Um, I'm going to put the last Terminus back in the deck, and I'm actually going to drop the other March. While March is nice because it does take care of Ragavan Dash, I think Prismatic Ending is better. Um, because the, the only difference there is March might be able to kill Murktide, but it's basically never going to because of how expensive Murktide is. Um, I think if you're going to play a deck like this, you have to rely either completely on Terminus and your Planeswalkers to be able to deal with Merc Tides, or you have to be running Path to Exile. And I think, I think that while March of Otherworldly Light and Prismatic Ending are fantastic, uh, people are still overlooking Path as a great option to disrupt their opponent. Because just like exile a creature and give your opponent a land doesn't really matter as much. Especially versus like Murktide, because they already are going to be playing lands on curve. They're already going to have a mana advantage because of Ragavan. Like, giving them another land probably isn't going to make the difference because you're not playing spells like Mana Leak anymore. Um, just something to consider for control lists. If people play control and I'm completely off base there, then... Feel free to correct me, but um, do I want Shark Typhoon? No, I I think I can go without it. I, I don't know what I would cut. Like, maybe Opt, but I think Opt is kind of important. Okay, so this hand is not really doable. Um, having two Terminus in your opener is almost like taking a mulligan or two, so this is much better. I will keep this. And I'm going to put back Deluge. That's probably a mistake, but I actually really want to take advantage of Ashiok here. So, we're going to lead on Polluted Delta. Okay. Opponent plays a Mishra's Bauble, bobbles himself, and then plays a Flooded Strand and passes. So, fetch with Polluted Delta, let's get a Hollowed Fountain tapped. Untap, they draw a card. We draw, uh, they fetch, and shock, okay, play an island, pass the turn. So had we put back a land, we would be fine. Um, for the deluge, I just, I was worried about not being able to draw the right number of lands. Opponent considers, that's okay. So likely what happened there is our opponent used bauble before they fetched their land to make sure that they could draw a card they really needed, be it a threat or like an expressive iteration or something. Um, if this is Dash Ragavan, there's nothing I can do about it, but if it is expressive iteration, I will veto that. Okay, Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay, so this is probably a Spell Pierce. Um, so as long as I play a land, I should be able to ending here. Okay, we did find the second white land, which is very important so that we have access to Dovin's Veto. So, let's Prismatic Ending. If they Spell Pierce, I'm just going to pay for the Spell Pierce. I'm not going to use up my Dovin's Veto. OK, 
Okay, they are going to go for the spell pierce here. So let's see how they surveil. We're going to fetch up our other hollowed fountain. And then pay for spell pierce. Pass the turn. As long as they don't follow all this up with an immediate Merc Tide, um, Ashiok will get a ton of value. So they play Scalding Tarn, they crack Scalding Tarn. They shock. And dash Ragavan. And play Dragon's Rage Channeler. So they either have another Spell Pierce, or that's just they're trying to be mana efficient. Okay. Exile on Archmage's Charm off the top of our deck, which would have been a nice draw for us. We untap and draw Jace. Jace is pretty good. Um, let's play an Island and play Ashiok. Both is like bait for another Spell Pierce, but also uh, as possible Grave Hate to keep them off of Delirium. Ashiok may also draw attention away from our life total. Opponent considers in response, getting to Surveil. Okay, Ashiok resolves, so let's mill them and exile their grave. We milled and engineered explosives, and we exiled one Merktide Regent. Opponent's turn. Um, they can pretty quickly rebuild and kill Ashiok if they happen to. They did not play Ragavan main phase. They're just attacking us for one. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. We draw a counter spell. So play an island. Mill our opponent. One second, I'm getting a phone call. Alright. Um Yeah, I think I'm just gonna hold up multiple counter spells now. Because my opponent's playing from a position that is behind. I'm gonna save counter I'm gonna use Dovin's Veto first so I can save counter spell for another threat. Yeah, let's let's veto that. No Archmage's Charm for you. That explains why they didn't dash Ragavan. They were hoping to draw cards this turn. This also means we're likely going to get a counterspell off on Ragavan. Okay, opponent left whatever it was they found on top. They draw. Okay, they dash Ragavan. We counter Ragavan. And they go to combat, they attack Ashiok for one. Uh, that probably means they have an Unholy Heat. Okay, that's exactly what it means. So they get to Surveil. Okay, Ashiok falls to one, then dies from the one point of combat damage. Okay, we untap. We draw Prairie Stream. So we're going to play Jace. Um, I could uptick. They don't have Delirium yet, so they would need a lot of stuff to kill Jace if they do. But I'm going to Brainstorm, because I want to hit removal for Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay, let's put back uh, Prairie Stream Terminus on top. Play Colony. Pass the turn. Drawing a second Jace is pretty fortuitous. Um, if they play a Merc Tide now, or they play a Ledger Shredder, or they otherwise develop the board... Um, they can do whatever they need to do to kill Jace, and then we can just mop up the board, which would be pretty sweet. So they put a Spire Bluff Canal into the grave. And they put an Expressive Iteration into the grave as well. So I think what they're going to do is attack for three here, and then play Murktide. They're going to kill Jace with uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay. They did not play Murktide. So, Miracle Terminus. I could have maybe not Miracled here, um, but if they counter this Terminus, I can resolve Jace unimpeded. Okay, they do have a counter spell, and they do use it on Terminus. I could have gotten really greedy there and tried to play second Jace and brainstorm Terminus to the top, but I think this is better. Um, I can Jace unsummon technically here, uh, but I think, yeah, we've not seen more than one Unholy Heat bolt, so this is probably going to die. Uh, so we're just going to Brainstorm. We will put back um, Prairie Stream, Terminus, play an Island, 
and pass. So this opponent will probably not expect the second terminus. <laughs> probably. And then we can maybe start beating down with Colonnade. But if our opponent over-dedicates to the board here, thinking they need to close the game up quickly because of their clock, Terminus will punish them for it. Oh, they exile their Terminus because they found a Raghavan. Oh, so we're brainstorm locked, uh, finding a land off the top here. Well, we're going to hold on to that for a minute because it's an untapped land that doesn't cost life, and we're probably putting Colonnade on blocking duty here to try and stay alive. Okay, opponent bobbles. So they put a Raghavan into the grave off of the Surveil trigger. They then bobble our top deck. Okay, this is looking like a big Merc Tide. It is. Okay, then they go to combat. They attack with Dragon's Rage Channeler, so... I really hope they don't have another burn spell, but it is possible. We're going to try and block with Colonnade here. They don't have a choice in attacking, though, so... Okay, they lose Channeler. We untap. They draw a card. We draw Counterspell, and they know about it. So let's pass the turn. I would probably counter a Raghavan here. Expressive Iteration. Oh, I should have played the Prairie Stream, because then I could counter and animate, no problem. Alright, we'll let that resolve. It's pretty bad for us, though. We need a third Terminus off the top now to deal with Murktide, or to Fairy Bounce, or something. But it does exile a Scalding Tarn and is able to play it. Okay, they go to combat. They attack for seven. Do I want to chump with Colonnade? I actually kind of think I have to here. I do have Counterspell if they have a removal spell, like on Holy Heat. Okay, opponent punted. There's no reason um, they should have let us actually declare blocks there if that was their plan. Because it just makes them waste an Unholy Heat. Okay, we untap. <laughs> miracle Terminus. Alright, it's a miracle. Cast Terminus. Opponent has a counterspell. Alright. Well, it will take a miracle for us to beat our opponent now. Hmm. Maybe I wasn't supposed to counter the Unholy Heat. Maybe I was supposed to save the counterspell for the theoretical Terminus we were going to need to beat this. Um, opponent plays an unlicensed hearse. Mainly, I guess this is for our Snapcaster Mage. We take 7, go to 4. Untap. Uh, we draw Prismatic Ending, which does not do anything. Not really, anyway. So, Prismatic Ending, the Hearse. Okay, they're gonna eat stuff out of our grave. Play the Prairie Stream, and as long as our opponent pays attention to the game for the next 20 seconds, they win. If they time out, they lose. They play a Tap Land. They go to combat, they attack for seven, we lose with 10 seconds left on their clock. Dang. All right. Well, um, let me see if I can't open that deck back up real quick. So this is partially my fault for having gotten to this deck so late because I know that um, this deck would have been better in an earlier metagame when this was submitted to me a couple of months before. When there was a lot more Luris decks running around, I actually think this deck would have done quite a bit better. Um, but some thoughts. I think that this version of the control, like, a, a, a control deck based on Miracles is probably just worse than most control strategies, especially with, uh, Modern being a format that now has individual cards of an incredibly high power level, um, you basically have to either play those cards or you have to play the cards that specifically counter those cards, which are generally also brand new cards of an ultra high power level. Now, you can kind of see this when we were casting things like Prismatic Ending, being able to answer a one drop of any size for one mana is really powerful. 
or you know a two drop or a three drop and prismatic ending being able to hit planeswalkers actually matters quite a bit especially when your opponent is also playing three mana to fairy so um you know fire and ice is also a really powerful spell we use that to a pretty good effect uh you know being able to cantrip off of it being able to miracle is great the problem is once you're playing a deck like murktide and you flip a terminus your opponent's going to go oh he's playing terminus so I have to only play one threat at a time. And normally that's pretty good for a control deck, but I think this list has is lacking card advantage just a little bit. I think it's I think it's leaning too hard into trying to draw on your opponent's turn so that you can miracle a terminus. Now that's a very, very powerful line, but I think it diminishes in value the more you do it. Because, like I just said, the instant you Terminus them, they're going to play around Terminus super hard, and they're also not going to play into your Supreme Verdicts and whatnot. Um, so, you know, Instant Speed Wraths are incredibly powerful, but your opponent recognizing them and then playing around them is just, like, it's going to make your, your card advantage suffer. Now, um... Regular control gets around this by playing only a few wraths and playing them, playing really powerful wraths. So Supreme Verdict is very powerful in current control lists because three mana to fairies uptick um, allows you to just cast Supreme Verdict on your opponent's turn. When your only way to take advantage of Terminus is blind flips off of Opt or by resolving Jace the Mind Sculptor, it's it's less good than it could be, which really sucks because I love the miracle mechanic. Um, but without brainstorm or an equivalent card, and I don't think brainstone counts. Um, I think miracles are are going to be a fun tier two strategy, which is totally fine. And you can totally play miracle control in a local meta game, especially if uh, the new newer modern cards are not prevalent. Um, and I think you can do that totally fine. It might even enable you to play like a, blood, a budget blue-white control list, which is a little bit of an oxymoron usually because control is one of the more expensive deck archetypes. Um, but if you have like an old control deck or an old miracles deck, like you can play it. It's, it's not bad or wrong to do so. Um, I think the problem with updating this list is a lot of the cards that you're going to want to play, like Solitude, you're going to want to play more Teferis, like, they don't synergize directly with the Terminus game plan. And I think, ultimately, Terminus, despite being as powerful as it is, because a one-mana Wrath on your opponent's turn is incredible, especially when exile effects and putting cards on the bottom or top of your opponent's library to, like, avoid death triggers is at kind of an all-time high in modern. It's, like, because if your opponent is, like evoking a solitude or evoking a subtlety or you know their their living ending and they're putting a million power on the board putting those cards on the bottom of your opponent's deck instead of back in the graveyard for them to use again is like it's so important and it, it kind of breaks my heart that terminus is not as powerful as it deserves to be because i love this card and it for a while it was it was a super powerful control strategy and like in, in Battle of Wits, I've had I played Terminuses and gotten like blind miracles with them at the perfect time, and it's just it's so cathartic, and your opponent tilts so hard when it happens because it's just it's not supposed to happen, you know. Um, but I'm I'm kind of sad to see that miracles as an alternative control strategy are not anywhere near as good as the primary control strategy in modern. Um, and I think a lot of the deck's performance today is based on me not having experience with control decks when I should. I, I don't have as much experience playing control decks in the current modern format, and I, I know I made a ton of punts. Like, there's six on the counter. So, you know, take that as you will. I definitely could have won, I think, a couple more matches than I did, and especially if I had gotten a little bit luckier, but... Um, that's also the downside of playing like a slightly more underpowered strategy. If you're not playing the absolute tippity top powerful cards, you're not going to just luck into, well, I have a powerful card and I win um, situations, right? As you would playing slightly less powerful cards. So um, 
all in all, I think uh, I think the strategy's fine. I think as far as control decks go, it was fun. I was having fun, even though I was losing in Mixum. I hope you enjoyed uh, your patron deck request. Thank you for being so patient and waiting for me to complete this, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And yeah. So if you want to have a video done by me, there is a Patreon tier you can join on my Patreon. Uh, link should be in the description. And other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined, and remember you can follow me on Twitch, same username over there as you find me on here. And I want you to know that you're all wonderful human beings, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!